I am currently a man in my 30s and an only child. During my early years, I lived with my parents in a different country outside the US. My childhood was marked by a toxic environment filled with arguments and emotional abuse towards my mother from my father and his parents. In an attempt to shield me from this negativity, my mother and I eventually moved to live with her parents. Despite the mistreatment towards my mother, my father and his parents were always kind to me. However, I witnessed the emotional abuse they directed towards my mother. The situation worsened over time as my father's parents constantly criticized my mother, leading my father to eventually turn against her as well. By the age of eight, I was deeply affected by the constant turmoil in our household. My mother made the difficult decision to leave the country for the U.S., where her brother resided. She relocated to the U.S. to escape the toxicity of the previous environment and to give me a chance for normal development. Even after our move, my father attempted to reconcile with my mother multiple times, promising to change for the better. However, my mother had already tried numerous times to improve their relationship, and she made the final decision to separate and later divorce. Despite my father's claims that my mother had taken me away from him, I 100% believe my mother made the right choice for my well-being. His continuous blaming of my mother and negative influence on me only added to the distress caused by their hurtful behavior. As I grew older, my relationship with my father remained strained, especially after he remarried a woman with her own challenges of control and jealousy. His new wife's controlling behavior and animosity toward me further strained our interactions. His new wife has a developmentally handicapped daughter, 45, female, from her previous marriage. And that daughter lives with the two of them. My dad provides for both of them financially and the three of them go on international vacations regularly and are living a happy life. His new wife has created a rule that my dad can't travel abroad to see me unless she is there with him. As a result, we have not seen each other since 2009 because he wants to abide by her rules and I also refuse to meet him with her present. To this day, he constantly suggests that the four of us all meet together and become friends. He tells me that he is stuck between me and his wife since neither of us are willing to compromise. While my dad has helped me financially when I've needed it, and even recently when I fell ill due to a chronic illness and wasn't working, he has really never stood up for me emotionally or prioritized our relationship over his new family. His reluctance to meet me without his wife's presence has led to a growing feeling of abandonment on my part. I have expressed my desire for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my father, but I'm not sure it will ever happen. Despite his assurances that he is trying to negotiate with his wife and figure out a way to visit me alone, he has yet to follow through due to his wife's influence. He keeps suggesting over and over again that we should all meet together. Also, every time I mention these feelings of abandonment to him, he always ignores my statement and always shifts the focus to one thing, that my mom ran away and took me away from him. What do I do? I'm tired of being treated like this. He said he is going to still support me financially for a down payment on a home. But my heart struggles to keep contact with him, despite the fact that I need his financial help. Should I just talk to him to get some level of financial benefit for now? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I agree with the therapy for sure as I'm doing that now. I had a similar situation and didn't talk to my dad for years until his wife passed. Even then it wasn't often and he never came to visit when I moved out west. I eventually came to terms with it and just accepted it's who he is and I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. Sadly, he's passed away now, and I didn't see or talk to him the year before he died. And I realize he made that choice, not me. And therefore, it's his burden to carry and not mine. Comment 2. You are 38, mate. Time to accept reality. Your father is never going to be the man you wish he was. You will never be a priority, and he will never be on your side. He's never going to suddenly be the dad you have wanted. He's not going to change, ever. Time for you to accept that. Make peace with it. Given how awful a person he sounds like, why would you want to be closer to him? Now, for the update. Thanks for sticking around to hear more of this mess. So, the other day, I got a call from my dad out of the blue. 
He said he had some big news and wanted to talk. I thought maybe he finally decided to stand up to his wife and come see me. But no, it was something else. He told me he was diagnosed with a serious health condition. I felt a mix of concern and anger. Concern because, well, he's still my dad. Anger because it felt like he was using this to guilt me into meeting his demands. He said he wanted to make things right and that he had changed his will to leave me a significant part of his estate. But there was a catch. He wanted me to reconcile with his wife and her daughter to become a real family before it was too late. I couldn't believe it. After all these years, he was still trying to control the situation, still not listening to what I needed. I told him I'd think about it, but inside, I was seething. It felt like he was buying my affection, my forgiveness. And the worst part? Part of me considered it because that money could really help with the house and my medical bills. The next day, my mom called. She had heard from my uncle about my dad's condition and his offer. She was worried I'd make a decision I'd regret. She reminded me of all the years of emotional turmoil he and his family put us through. She said I didn't owe him anything, not even forgiveness if it wasn't genuine. But she also said she'd support whatever decision I made. It was a lot to take in. I was torn. I wanted to be the bigger person, to show that I wasn't like him, that I could forgive. But I also felt like this was just another one of his games, and I was tired of playing. Then, things got even more complicated. His wife called me, something she's never done before. She was crying, saying how much my dad wanted to fix things before it was too late. She promised they'd respect my boundaries if I just gave them a chance. I didn't know what to make of it. Was this just another manipulation? Or had my dad's illness really changed something in her? I decided to meet them. I don't know if it was the right choice, but I did it. We met at a neutral place, a coffee shop downtown. It was awkward, to say the least. His wife tried to be nice, but it all felt so forced. And her daughter just sat there looking uncomfortable. My dad, though, he looked frail, not like the imposing figure I remembered. We talked, mostly small talk, avoiding the big issues. When we parted, they all hugged me, and I felt nothing. I was numb. After that, I kept thinking about the house, the medical bills, and the future. I called my dad and told him I'd try to make it work with his family. He was overjoyed, said he knew I'd make the right decision. But as I hung up, I felt sick to my stomach. I had sold a piece of myself for financial security. And the worst part, I wasn't even sure if the money would ever come or if this was just another empty promise. Thanks for reading. Th my boyfriend takes a three-week European vacation with my friend while I work. But when he comes crawling back, broke, I shut him down and show him who's boss by refusing to be his ATM. Hi, just looking for advice on this situation and how to approach it with my boyfriend. I'm not always the best at voicing my feelings and being assertive. Here's the situation. My close friend, A. Eur, 30 years old, is planning on going on a three-week vacation to Europe next March for a convention. She has been planning it for a while. We were all having dinner together a couple of months ago, and she was discussing her plans and asked if my boyfriend, T., 30 years old, and I want to go with her. We'd both love to but I am a teacher, so I can't take three weeks off of work in March. So we said, oh, well, and moved on to a new topic. A few days ago, my boyfriend let me know that his boss said he was good to go with taking off three weeks next March for his vacation. I asked him what he was talking about, and he said it was for the vacation he will be taking with A to Europe. I was a little taken aback because I didn't realize they had continued planning to go together without me. He told me I was invited, of course, and I reminded him that I can't take that time off of work. He is fully aware of this. I have been teaching for several years. He asked me if it was okay for him to go, and I said yes at the time, but now I'm feeling a little weird about it. These are some reasons why. A and I have been close friends for about 20 years. A and T have known each other for about 2.5, three years since she moved to our area. I guess I'm feeling a little jealous of their closeness. However, I would like to add that trust is not the issue here. I trust them both fully that they are platonic friends and nothing more. It just kind of sucks that they wouldn't want to include me in a huge trip. I don't blame A for this, though. 
because she has been planning this trip for a while and can't change the time of the trip because she is going for a convention. My boyfriend has no interest in the convention itself. However, he is very interested in the location. I am paying for grad school currently, so it is unlikely that I would be able to afford the trip anyway. But I will be done with school next summer and would love to take a long vacation after that. If my boyfriend goes on this trip, it is unlikely that he will be able to afford another multi-week international trip for quite some time. Another part of the reason that I will need to save money before I can afford a large vacation is because I went through a large chunk of my savings paying my boyfriend's rent for several months while he was unemployed last year. He has told me that he will pay me back, but I think it's unlikely that I'll be fully repaid before next March. He has next to no savings currently. We have been discussing having kids and buying a house in the next couple of years. This makes it even less likely that he will be able to afford more than one large vacation before that happens, while still saving money to help us afford those things. Sorry, this turned out kind of long. I think I just needed to write out my thoughts. If anyone has some advice about how to bring this up to tea without seeming controlling, I would love some suggestions. I don't want to take away his chance for an amazing, once-in-a-lifetime experience, but I would like to be the one to experience it with him. Thank you for reading. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Absolutely not okay. You are being way too soft on him about paying you back, especially considering you are in school and making a teacher's salary. Also, nobody with zero savings and a bunch of debt has any business planning a spontaneous three-week international trip. Also, also, why the hell would he take this once-in-a-lifetime type trip without you? Why would he even want to? I wouldn't dream of doing something like this without my wife, and I would have felt the same while we were just dating. Really weird, selfish behavior. Don't tolerate it. Comment 2. I think it is fine to talk this over with your boyfriend and explain your very valid points. I don't think it is being overly controlling, especially given that he owes you money, doesn't have the funds for a ton of travel to do something else with you, and you have larger life goals that you are trying to accomplish together that you need to save for. I know you don't want to be the spoiler of fun and or seem jealous, but there are some very pragmatic reasons that he should reconsider in my opinion, and I think it at least warrants a big discussion. Now for the update, hey, a lot has happened since my last post, and I need to get this off my chest. So after T told me he was going to Europe with A, things got weird. He started acting distant, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Then out of nowhere my sister calls me saying she saw T and A at a jewelry store. My heart sank. I didn't want to believe it, but there they were, looking way too close for comfort. I confronted T, and he brushed it off, saying they were just looking for a gift for A's mom. I wanted to believe him, but it didn't sit right with me. A month later, I found out I was being transferred to a new school across the country. It was a huge opportunity, a chance to start fresh, T was supportive at first, but then he dropped the news. He said he didn't want to move, that he had his own life here, and that he'd go to Europe with A anyway. I was devastated. How could he choose a trip over our future? The move was chaotic, but it gave me time to think. I started my new job and it was going great, but back home, things were unraveling. T lost his job and suddenly he couldn't afford the trip or pay me back the money he owed. He called asking for help, but I was done. I told him I couldn't keep fixing his problems. He got mad, said some things he couldn't take back, and that was it for me. I cut him off, told him we were through. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I couldn't drown with him. Meanwhile, A went on her trip alone. She sent me pictures and it looked amazing, but it was bittersweet. When she got back, she came to visit me. We had a long talk and she admitted she had feelings for T, but realized it was a mistake. She apologized for everything and we decided to try and salvage our friendship. It's not the same, but we're working on it. Thanks for reading. It's been interesting to say the least, but I'm getting through it. My fiance cheats for seven years. 
blaming his dad's massage parlor antics. But when I find out he's jobless and his mom's lying too, I leave him with a baby on the way and a lesson in fidelity. He'll never forget. My partner, 26-year-old male, and I, 26-year-old female, have been together for seven years, reconnecting in college after knowing each other since middle school. We've been living together for about three years. He proposed a little over one year ago, and I was beyond thrilled. We had a wedding date set for this year and plans for starting a family. However, devastatingly, he revealed to me a month ago that he's cheated on me several times during our relationship, with the most recent incident occurring last August. I am heartbroken beyond words. He claims that when he was younger, his father took him to a massage parlor, which confused him about intimacy release. He says he never enjoyed the experience, felt guilty afterward, and had to share this with me to avoid bringing lies into our marriage. While I understand he's been through trauma, there's no excuse for cheating. My world has been turned upside down because he was my everything. He was sweet, supportive, and seemingly perfect. He supported me through mental breakdowns, grad school, career changes, etc. etc. He was the guy that opened my car door, bought me flowers for no particular reason, enjoyed spending time with my family, always thoughtful, kind, and caring. I always told him that cheating was a deal breaker for me, but now I'm conflicted. How do we even begin to heal from this? I'm angry because he's shattered my trust and our relationship will never be the same. He's begged for my forgiveness hand and knees several times and has given me a lot of verbal affirmations that he loves me and the whole I messed up speech, even sharing his remorse with his mom who supported me and told him that I have every right to leave him. He's willing to follow any terms or conditions if I decide to stay, admitting his mistake and regretting hurting me. Is a relationship salvageable after infidelity? How do I recover from this? Should I move on? I hate the thought of starting over, but staying feels equally daunting. Once a cheater, always a cheater. I'm grateful this came out before we got married, but maybe if we weren't living together, I'd leave him completely. We're currently on speaking terms and cohabiting, but I still have moments of intense emotion, like crying or struggling to get out of bed. He tries to comfort me, acknowledging his mistake and promising to be strong for the both of us. I admit I considered cheating back, hoping it would ease my pain, but I couldn't go through with it. I confessed to him and stopped that situation immediately, and he understood my reasons completely. I admit I do hold rancor for him at times because I do not understand why cheating was ever an option for him. I equally gave him my life and trusted him to the moon and back. Again, I still believe there is no excuse for cheating. Given this crappy situation, any advice would be greatly appreciated. I'm desperate for guidance. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you want to recover from this? You move on without him. The very hard and real truth is that you'll never be able to look at him the same way. You told him it's a deal breaker. You stick with that conviction and he needs to be held accountable for his actions. I could understand it happening when he was younger and his father took him but he's a grown man and went just eight months ago? That's just disgusting. You say he does all these nice things for you, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is that there are men out there who will do the exact same and possibly more that won't cheat on you. I divorced a cheater after being together for nine years. Your life isn't over. Comment two. Please save yourself years of looking over your shoulder and leave. My ex-husband made the same promises before we married. 18 years later, I discovered his hidden accounts and burn phones. It is cheaper to leave now than after almost two decades and two kids. He did you a favor by telling you now. I will tell you life is much more peaceful, no longer worrying about what my ex-husband is doing behind my back. He remarried quickly, and according to my kids, is doing the same to her. They don't change. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around after my last update. So, things have gotten even messier, if you can believe it. Just when I thought we might be able to work through this, my partner dropped another bomb on me. Turns out, the cheating wasn't the only secret he'd been keeping. 
He lost his job three months ago and didn't tell me. Said he was too ashamed and didn't want to burden me with more bad news. He's been pretending to go to work every day, leaving the house, and then just driving around or sitting in coffee shops. I found out when I called his office to surprise him with lunch, and they told me he no longer worked there. I was floored. How could he lie about something so big and for so long? It's like I don't even know who he is anymore. The trust is just completely gone. But wait, it gets worse. Remember his mom who was on my side? Well, she's not the ally I thought she was. She's been covering for him this whole time, giving him money to help with bills and keep up the charade. When I confronted her, she said she did it because she believes we're meant to be together and didn't want his mistakes to ruin our future. I felt so betrayed by him, by her, by the whole situation. It's like they were conspiring against me. And the worst part, I almost let it slide. I was so desperate to cling to the life we planned, I actually considered forgiving him again. He promised he'd find a new job and that we'd get past this, just like the cheating. He was so convincing and I wanted to believe him so badly. But deep down, I knew it was wrong. I should have walked away then and there. Instead, I made the wrong choice. I told him we'd figure it out together. I can't believe I fell for his lies again. It's like I'm stuck in the cycle of wanting to believe the best in him, even though he's proven he doesn't deserve it. And then, as if things couldn't get any more complicated, I found out I'm pregnant. I haven't told him yet. I don't know what to do. I, I, this changes everything, but at the same time, it doesn't change the fact that he's lied and cheated. I'm scared and confused. I keep thinking about our future, about being a family. But then I remember all the lies. How can I bring a child into this mess? How can I trust him to be a good father when he's been such a terrible partner? I'm trying to sort through my feelings, but it's hard. I swing from anger to sadness to hope and back again. I know I need to make a decision for me and for the baby, but it's overwhelming. I wish I could say I have a plan, but I don't. Right now, I'm just trying to get through each day. I'm going to see a therapist to help me work through everything. Maybe they can help me figure out what to do next. Thanks for reading. It helps to get this all out, even if it's just as strangers on the internet. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.